Who's that? It's me. Are you my subconscious? No, it's the right side of your brain. What? Yep, and I need your help. With what? I need you to... Um... Okay, we can do a video about that. In this video, I'm helping the right side of my brain out. And while we're at it, I'm going to share the single most useful tool that you already own that is going to really help you when it comes to drawing, sketching, and painting. And in fact, it's probably within six feet of you at this very moment. But you're probably not putting it to good use. At least, not for your art, you're not. To understand why this tool is so valuable, I want to tell you a little anecdote about my days in art school a gajillion years ago. When I was in my first year, where you learn the foundations of everything, from drawing to color, perspective, etc., my figure drawing teacher kicked off the semester by telling us, in quotes, and I'm paraphrasing, successful drawing is not about your technique, it's about the quality of your observational skills. And while that line totally makes sense now, at the time, 18-year-old me was like, what the f what are you even talking about? Because yeah, it's really easy to think you're using your eyes to understand your surroundings and your subject well enough to draw or paint them. But you'd be surprised how much your brain short circuits that and butts in. Did you hear that? You know when artists whip out their pencils and they start making those funny gestures with their hands and wave them in the air? But they just don't care. It's not because they're trying to be all slick and art mastery. It's actually a clever trick to outsmart that tricky brain of yours. Have you ever heard of your brain having a left side and a right side? You probably have because most people like to identify themselves as either being right-brained or left-brained. The left brain is associated with logic, analysis, and structure. It's the rule-abiding rational side that likes to label everything and stick to what it knows the safe one. On the other hand, the right brain is kind of like the wild child, the free-spirited, creative, and intuitive part that thinks outside the box and colors outside the lines. Now, when you're drawing, your left brain often gets bossy and tries to rely on what it already knows, which can somewhat limit your artistic freedom. And it's kind of like having a know-it-all friend who always wants things done exactly their way. It is useful though, because it is the side of the brain that makes sure that you're safe, that you have spatial awareness. The right brain, on the other hand, is the one who excels at perceiving and interpreting the visual things around it. So it processes the overall picture instead of getting caught up in all the individual details. And this allows the right brain to capture the essence of a subject, going beyond what the left brain might typically perceive. You see, the left side and the right side of the brain process information very differently. So when you put them together, you get somewhat of a tug of war. Instead of observing and capturing what you actually see, your left brain often jumps in with its preconceived notions and tries to replicate what it thinks it knows. And this can be everything from scale and proportion to tonal values like where the shadows on your subject are. And there's actually a book that dives into this whole phenomenon in more detail, and it's called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. And if you want to read more about all the nitty gritty about it, I'll link it right below so you can check that out. So artists throughout the ages have developed a lot of tricks to bypass that left side voice. And in art school, they teach you things like flip your subject upside down, or create a grid, or create a wheel grid. There are so many ways and different tactics to prevent the left side of your brain from drawing no pun intended, those particular conclusions. So this brings me to my tip of the day and one of my all-time favorite tricks, especially if you're out of drawing practice. Meet your new drawing buddy, your smartphone. So your phone, aside from being an amazing source for zombifying yourself by spending hours on TikTok and Instagram, it actually has a lot of really interesting features that can help you when you're drawing and you're painting. Let me show you some of my favorites. Feature number one. This helps you to understand the values in your drawing and in your painting. So when you're looking at a subject, it can easily get really overwhelming to make sense not only of the different colors and hues going on, but check this out. If you take a photo of your subject and turn your saturation down to grayscale, look at that, it becomes a value study. Hey, what's a value study? 
Okay, I'll explain. A lot of artists do a value study of their subject before they start to paint. And usually it's done with pencil, but, but what you do is you take your subject and simplify it down to only blacks, whites, and grays. And this helps you see the relationships between the lights and darks without getting distracted by color. It also helps you to understand your light source and where light is bouncing around and reflecting. You see, as sophisticated as our brains are, we often have a hard time transcribing what we see. Take this pear as an example. You would think that it's lighter in the middle and you have shadows on both sides where the curves are. But if I take a picture of it and convert it to black and white, you'll see that the white of my table is actually reflecting light back up, so the edges have a little bit of a reflection to them. And that makes it look a lot more three-dimensional. So if you're new to understanding values, or you want to skip making a value study and get straight into drawing and painting, you can use your phone as a way to help you understand your subject and see the subtleties and the values much more clearly. Now don't trash that photo just yet, because there's another thing you can use it for when creating your painting. You can use it for composition. So once you have a photo of your subject, you can play around with cropping and framing. Your photo makes it quick and easy to crop in different ways and see how it changes the look and feel of your image. Back in the day, artists used to have a little frame called a viewfinder, which is typically a piece of cardboard, a plastic, or other materials that have a rectangular hole cut out in the center. I know, so analog. Your phone can actually act as your viewfinder, so you can frame your subject, allowing you to block out distracting elements and focus just on your composition. You can crop tight for a close-up, intimate view, or go really wide to show more environment and more background. Play around with different aspect ratios, like square or panoramic. Shift your subject off-center or position it dead-center. Even try rotating it. This lets you quickly experiment with different croppings and frames before committing them to paper. Think of it as a digital thumbnail. Okay, so we have two uses for your phone. Are you ready for the last one? The last one involves color, and this again is another place where your brain can try to interpret things in a certain way, mostly based on logic instead of more intuitively. So coming back to this pear we've been working on, you might think pear green or orange, depending on your pear. But there are so many other hues and colors bouncing off of this subject. You might have some green in some parts, you might have some yellows, maybe some oranges depending on the time of the day, and the light source in your room. So while these other factors are at play, your brain is still telling you to focus on the logic-based information. It is telling you that hair was just green. It's a green pear and there's a brown stem. But there's so much more to it than that, and you'd be missing out if you boiled it down to just values of those two colors. So here's where your phone comes in really handy. If you pinch to zoom in on your subject, it actually really helps with being able to isolate coloration on different parts. So this can help you with color mixing, it can help you with seeing color temperatures, it can also help you with understanding some of the textural aspects, because what it's doing is essentially flattening the space into a two-dimensional image and forcing your brain to focus on an area in complete isolation. You're tricking it to look at it as a flat object, instead of making the logical connection based on life experiences of what your brain thinks it should look like, what it feels like, what it tastes like. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you another creative use for a tool that's just been sitting there unused. Who's kidding who? We all know our phones are glued to our hands 24-7. But the next time you're working on a drawing or a painting, try leveraging your phone in these ways and use it as a creative tool alongside your pencils and paints because having visual references can really boost your observational skills. Just be sure not to get sucked into TikTok or Instagram. So Right Brain, does that help you out? Sure does, thank you. You're so welcome, Right Brain. It's been my pleasure. I have one more question though. Okay. What's for dinner? Ha <laughs> ha